Hey, it's Bruno. I, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me to kind of give them a, a tutorial and tour of what soaring is really like, so eh, might as well do it right now. Um, unfortunately, my task is not going to happen today, so I'm just playing, doing loops, and just having fun. So let me just give you a quick tour of the cockpit. This is my new control panel. And uh, this is a moving map display. Right now I'm in thermal mode. I've got a little mouse down by my left hand. But if you go to the first map, it actually shows it actually shows a map. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see. This just kind of helps glider pilots know where know where they are. Also, if you look at all of these, I don't know if you can see my mouse all these little green boxes. These are all different airports that I can land at and uh, what glide ratio I need to get to them. So if it says 3.3, I just need a 3.3 glide ratio in order to get there, so no big deal. Then all down here are different uh, stats to help me uh, figure out how fast I'm going, where I need to go, uh, what direction I need to go, for example. Uh, this bearing, I've, the turn point I've got to right now, it says, you know, turn 16 degrees to the left to get there, and the distance is, a, is 12 miles. So anyway, just a really cool, uh, very um, tailored little computer for, uh, for, for soaring. People also ask me what it is, and this is a Craigie Aero Ultimate LE that's running CU Mobile. Uh, right here is uh, my main Vario. I've got another Vario on order. And a Vario is what tells you if you're going up or down. So in this case, uh, it tells you also some really in interesting information. This is a V7 from LXNav, and uh, absolutely love it. I think it's one of the most elegant looking Varios on the market. And uh, that's the thing that's beeping. And the beeping tells you if you're going up or down. So if, if you actually were able to see my face right now, I'm not even looking at the cockpit. I'm looking out for other gliders and airliners and, uh, and stuff like that. So don't judge my thermaling right now because I'm, I'm totally not even trying to thermal. I'm just messing around. But what the Vario tells you is if you're going up or down. So in this case, this red needle tells me if I'm going up. And uh, each of these numbers represent hundreds of feet per minute, basically. Uh, we call it knots, so it's just a little bit more. So I've been averaging, just messing around, talking to you. It was 2.2 knots, so going up a couple hundred feet per minute. So people ask, how in the world can you go up in a glider um, when the glider doesn't have an engine and so it's falling? And it's true, the glider's always falling, and in this case, my glider's falling, let's say, 120 feet per minute but the air rising is going up faster than that. So in this case, the air might be going up five or 600 feet. And the net gain is that, you know, I actually, I actually rise. Here's my airspeed indicator, altimeter. And uh, this thing I don't use very much. I usually just use this altimeter. Here's a transponder. And this tells you um, what you're doing is you're actually squawking a code out to air traffic control and other airliners and so forth that have special equipment. And they can actually see me and see where I am. So right now they see that I'm at flight level 1100, or one, flight level 11, which is uh, 11,000 feet up. This right here is my uh, radio. And uh, then I just have fuses and uh, you know my, my battery and electrical system. So, there you go. There's this. I don't know if you can see down here, but this right here is a mountain high oxygen system. And uh, it delivers a pulse of air into a uh, nasal cannula that I'm uh, wearing right now. And uh, what's cool is that it, it, it detects how high I am, and so it gives me just the right amount of air, which helps conserve oxygen. People ask, what in the world is this thing? This is called a yaw string, and uh, actually this is a special. This is an MK4 yaw string. It's a high-tech yarn yaw string. Uh, Bumper makes them, and uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, what this does is this tells me if I'm uh, going straight into the wind or not. So you've got rudder pedals, so I'm gonna hands off the controls. So I'm doing all left rudder pedal, see that? Now I'm doing all right rudder pedal. And you can see that that yaw is the sailplane. So I have a little tiny dot right here which shows me when I'm going straight. So what you're trying to do effectively when you're flying, because you don't have an engine pulling you forward, 
is uh, try to keep the, the, the glider in line with the, uh, I don't know if this is correct or not, the relative wind. So let's say I'm turning, I, the, the yaw string is like this. I actually need to step on my right rudder to bring it back around and I really want to keep it pretty much like that. In a glider when you're turning you actually want it a little bit on the outside so you're uh, slipping in, in the turn but it's a little bit too technical. And uh, let's see what else. This right here is the device that is uh, my GPS device that then powers all of this. But then it also is a secure flight recorder. So, you know, those of us that race and so forth, we put uh, um, turn points into this and then it records, uh, mine was recording once a second exactly where I am, um, how fast I'm going, what my altitude is, the direction I'm going, that kind of a thing. And then you can download it after the fact. And uh, like if you were racing, you then submit a uh, file at the end of the day and they tell you how you did. So that's really where, how we are. I'm, I mean, you can see I'm totally not concentrating on thermaling or anything, but uh, you know, just kind of getting sucked up into the clouds. So uh, I'm now at uh, 12,000 feet. And uh, that, by the way, is looking out into uh, Utah Lake. And uh, that's where we are. So in terms of additional instruments, I'm going to get a Butterfly Vario, which is a secondary Vario, and it has some other interesting aspects to it, uh, specifically some wind uh, things that I'm excited about. Even though I show wind right here, um, supposedly, I don't know, more technical or correct. I mean, look at that. So I just hit a bump, and now I'm going up a 1,000 feet per minute. I mean, isn't that cool? I mean, look at that. Hands off, just going up a thousand feet per minute, just playing in the clouds. And uh, the thing that you can do with a glider is people think, oh, you know, fine, you go up, you just kind of go around. Well, you can literally go hundreds of miles, in fact, thousands of kilometers. Uh, the records now are well over 2,000 kilometers in flight distance. I mean, 2,000 kilometers is, I don't know, like 1,300 miles or something like that. It's just crazy. So on a, on a decent day, oftentimes we'll go three, four, maybe even 500 miles just riding on thermals, which, will be, which is what we call the, the rising columns of air. So what you kind of do is you kind of thermal up and you get to as high as the, the lift is good and then you glide for an extended period of time until you find another thermal. That might be 10 or 15 miles away and then you thermal up again. If people ask me, well, how, how do you know where the thermals are? Well, I steered right for this cloud for a reason. There is a, you know, this cloud is being built actually from a thermal, rising air. I mean, look at that, see? So I go into this cloud and look at this. Just getting sucked up. So sometimes it's uh, really challenging to find the thermals. On days like today, you have the clouds that can really help you. Um, also, oftentimes if you fly over the mountain ranges, that's uh, that's where the that's where the thermals are. So actually, so here I am at 12,500. I'm going to turn on my oxygen. So all I have to do is just press this uh, mountain high button, and uh, anything over 10,000 feet. It uh, delivers a little pulse of oxygen, so if you listen, just when I breathe in through my nose, it gives me a little bit of oxygen. So if I was up at, let's say, 18,000 feet, that pulse would be a lot stronger. And uh, let's see what else. Um, in terms of glide ratio, uh, for every mile up in this glider, I can glide 48 miles in any direction, theoretically. That's at a certain speed. Um, now, if the air is going down in that uh, time, I'm not going to be able to go as far. If it's going up, I might be able to go 100 miles or, or 200 miles. But in still air, calm air, I can go 48 miles for every one mile I drop. And oftentimes, I mean, we're up flying at 17, 18,000 feet. So uh, ground here is 5,000 feet. 18,000 feet is two and a half miles. So not just theoretically, but practically, I really can fly 100 miles in any direction when I'm at 18,000 feet. So that's not going to happen today because, again, you know, here I'm at 12,000 feet. And here's cloud base, uh, you know, above me. So that's not going to happen, but uh, still is fun. In terms of speeds, that's something that's pretty amazing. 
Um, you know, our landing speed, we're landing right around uh, 45 miles an hour with flaps. This is a flap machine. People always ask me, so what's this? So this is your flap handle, and you actually can go into negative flaps, which means if this were the wing, the, the flaps are actually pointing up. Normally in airliners, you see the flaps come down. Um, but in up, that's high, for high-speed crews. Um, it actually, you don't need as much lift that the wing is generating, so you do the flaps up, and uh, lift actually uh, creates drag, and so you can go faster and farther with, with the flaps. So what I just did is as I'm speeding up, I put the flaps into more of a positive setting, and as I keep speeding up, I, I then keep doing higher flaps. As I come into land, I, I come back, and then the, the flaps go into... Uh, actually, I, this whole time I've been saying positive, but this is negative flaps as it goes up. Positive flaps is coming down. So, you know, just now heading over to this uh, cloud right here, and probably going to get something. In between clouds, oftentimes, you have sink. Um, so you got to just speed through the sink and then slow down and circle up in the lift. And then this right here, this right here is my spoiler handle. On the wings, let's say this was the wing, I actually have uh, two boards. They look like boards that pop up and they kind of spoil the lift. And it helps you to control your descent as you're landing. Um, you can do a precision landing in these things and land exactly where you want to and stop where you want to. Um, and the way that you do it is you actually pull out the spoilers and you put in the flaps so you're not flying at your best efficiency. And so if you need to, let's say, go a little bit further and uh, add power, you just put the flaps in, uh, and well, or the spoilers in, and it actually seems, it's, it's just like with an airplane, it seems like you're adding power and you'll, you'll go further. So, uh, I don't know, that's where we are. Um, Again, you know, soaring is a spectacular sport. Again, you go hundreds of miles. You're up in the air. You, you, you oftentimes are soaring with hawks and eagles. And, I mean, they're right off the wingtip, and you can look, and you actually see them blinking. You're so close. And uh, um, you just see just amazing terrain. So if that's the best sales pitch I can give. Um, in terms of finding out about uh, soaring, there's a website, Let's Go Gliding. And .com, I think, and uh, there's ssa.org for sure, um, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's not as expensive to learn as, uh, say, learning to fly an airplane, and uh, if you join a club or something, you know, your initial cost is going to be over $1,000, and then your club dues are just tens of dollars, if, you know, not more than $100 a month, and then you can fly the club gliders. And uh, so, it, it, you know, for a couple thousand dollars a year, you can enjoy the sport and fly um, all summer long. And uh, I don't know, that's, that's the best sales pitch I got. So the best thing to do is go to the, one of those websites that I talked about, and I'll put, a, I'll put the website address on this video. And uh, go check out one of those websites, and they'll give you more information on how to contact somebody to find out how to go soaring. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Uh, just for fun, just to end this thing, uh, why not? Let's just do a loop. It's kind of fun. So for a loop, you're going to pick up some airspeed. So now I'm doing 100 knots, 110 knots, and then you just pull back. Right now I'm pulling 3.5 Gs. There I am, upside down, very straight down, and you got to pull out of it, and there you go. So, here's a loop. Go soaring. At least give it a try. It's a blast.